Awesome. So you, I just wait here in the lobby inside? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I got a real estate agent that's uh, kind of shady. I want to see what kind of, uh, how shady she is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. This is Susan Bassey with a very special First Amendment investigative audit. Most of you know that about a year ago, we met a group of people who were recording the police and putting their videos up online. We didn't really understand why they were doing it or why it was important. We did know that what they were showing us on YouTube had nothing to do with what we had seen on television and in the movies when it came to police. So we thought we would start doing what they were doing to try to describe what was going on in our family courts. And in order to do that, we need to talk about the family home, which is often the subject of a divorce or custody case. Many families find a community based on a real estate agent who introduces them to an area where they can afford. You investigate the schools and the crime rates. You look for good teachers and you make sure that your streets are going to be safe for your children to play in. Few of us ever think about what will happen if that family home should be the subject of a divorce case. Judge Louise Goldston was presiding over a case involving Matt Gibson and his ex-wife. She filed a contempt after the divorce was finalized to get more of the items they agreed upon, like DVDs and pictures. When Gibson stated in the courtroom that he wasn't sure if he had them or wasn't sure where they were, the judge decided to take the hearing to his home and began searching through it with Raleigh County deputies. Gibson, a federal agent himself, felt it wasn't right and began filming. Take a look. Can we, hey, hey guys, I need you off my property, please. Hey. You ain't allowed on my property. The only ones allowed right now is the judge and the deputy. Step off the property. Yes. Step off the property. Judge, can I ask you something real quick before we get started? Judge, huh? can I ask you something before we get started? Sure. Can you come here? I ain't trying to have everybody listen. Well, well, Mr. Luskis will listen. That's good. Uh, I'm asking you right now, to, I'm putting in a motion to recuse yourself because you're putting yourself in a witness capacity instead of a judiciary capacity. There's no search warrant. I need a list of everything that we're looking for. You've got a list of everything that's worth for the Not today. To the order. Not today. I don't know where some of it's at. Well, we're so going to find it. You got it? it? Your motion's denied. It's not timely we're, filed. I need a search warrant. You won't get in my house without a search warrant. Oh, yeah, I will. Oh, yeah, I will. And she did. Matt Gibson said he was told in court he had 10 minutes to get back home before they were coming. He said the judge, along with three police officers, his ex-wife and her attorney, entered the home without a warrant and began seizing items, threatening arrest if he did not comply. They seized the photos off the wall. They searched his closet. They came through here to the kitchen. They searched the cabinets in here. His phone was taken outside as he was caught recording, but he submitted the video and audio to local attorney John Bryan, who then put it up on YouTube. He said he handles lots of illegal search and seizure cases, but never one like this. I don't know if, if I've ever really heard that my, my house was illegally searched by a judge. And the reason for that is because that's not what judges do. Judges do not search houses. Judges do not search anything. He says he has not been able to find other cases like this in his research but he believes it is in strong violation of the Fourth Amendment. Few people understand how our family courts really work, where there are no juries and where you have to hire a lawyer. And if you can't afford one, one is not appointed for you as they are in criminal courts. And these courts are very secretive and judges after a while feel very emboldened. They don't follow the law, and this is what families deal with when they're dealing with the family courts in a community. A judge who is willing to go to your home to hold a hearing, to not be disqualified, even though the husband in this case clearly showed that the judge was biased, could be a potential witness, and should not be doing what she was doing. But the most outrageous thing to me was that she came to his home with a police officer, who conducted a search without a warrant, and they weren't even allowed to record what was going on. Order the order. 
I'll have to think about that because that's pretty permanent in. That's not bolted down. It is bolted down, all yeah. four legs. It is absolutely it's bolted, bolted down. down. Yes, it is. So I have to think about that. Ma'am, step off. I don't need you in my land. Please go that way. Please well, go away. She's entitled to be here. Now, you're either going to let me in that house or he's going to arrest you for direct. Are you recording this? Yes, ma'am. Take his phone. Okay, so I'm right now recording their conversation right here. I'm recording their conversation. This is Santa Clara County Sheriff Lori Smith. She's a very popular sheriff and has been re-elected for a number of terms. She's also one of the first women to be elected as a sheriff in the state of California. She's given me a great deal of access for interviews and provided me information that other politicians in the county have not granted me. And she oversees the bailiffs in the family courthouse, meaning these bailiffs sit in on divorce and custody cases. I do happen to know that Sheriff Smith doesn't know about private judging, and she's in charge of the culture in that courthouse when it comes to her bailiffs. And I'm also aware that a number of her top-level employees, including the undersheriff, don't know the law when it comes to recording in public or public officials. But this is part of an intimidation process. She's There's nothing figure. wrong about this. We have this. a right to record her anytime she's in public. I can go in her bedroom or have a private meeting with her and record her. But I can record her. I can record you. I can record anybody at any time. You're public figures and I have a right to do that. We're, we're, we're okay right now. We're okay right now. That's where I was standing with her yesterday. But that's where I was recording her so at yesterday right in front of the door. Yes, like this. We don't have privacy. There's 50 people standing here, and and I'm recording you right now because this is law-abiding activity, and I'm not doing anything wrong. You don't have a private conversation in a public area. No, and I'm a member of the press. That's okay. Let's let's get back. Thanks, guys. We need to all start reading the Constitution. This is law-abiding activity, boys. There's nothing wrong about doing this. This is part of the problem with our Sheriff's Department. This is the Santa Clara County District Attorney, Jeff Rosen. Most people don't understand what a prosecutor does in their community. They prosecute bad police officers, they can prosecute judges, they're in charge of public corruption, and they also prosecute the regular crimes that we're used to hearing about, murders, briberies, kidnappings, and even fraud cases. In 2015, I'm aware that a complaint was made to the district attorney's office about a divorce attorney, a private judge, and a real estate agent, Patty Felice. And the district attorney referred that case to his public corruption prosecutor, John Chase. And John Chase decided that there was nothing to investigate in that case, and he referred the complainant to the state bar. If your question is, is there a, can a group of individuals engage in a conspiracy to violate the law? Um, the answer is yes, and that's why I'm employed as the district attorney, because people do that quite often. We were able to find one real estate case that the district attorney did charge, a white-collar crime, involving a divorce attorney and a real estate agent involved in fraud related to Los Gatos and Gilroy properties. Do you have any comment about your attorneys discussing evidence out in the court in the outside the courtroom which I heard and took notes on related to witnesses that you wanted to preclude from testifying at the board? Well you shouldn't be overhearing or eavesdropping. It wasn't a mistake on sir an attorney client conversation. Sir that's wrong. He's represented by the IDO. This is Terry Houghton. He has been selling real estate and doing real estate investments for nearly as long as his wife has been a family law attorney. It was very rare that the district attorney would prosecute somebody involved in real estate and an attorney, and so we started following this case back in 2017. Judge Manukian granted one of my associates permission to record these proceedings, and so we have video of what it looked like inside the courtroom. Because Valerie Houghton was not put in jail while she awaited her trial. In fact, she was appointed in a number of cases to represent children, and she had an ability to accept appointments as a private judge in family law cases, meaning she wasn't sitting in jail awaiting trial. She spent nearly five years continuing to earn income where she could be paid for the county 
and where the county was also paying for her husband's criminal defense as he claimed to be too poor to afford it. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome, sir. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Alum, go ahead. Uh, Your Honor, as we discussed at the, the defense on prior... Perhaps the only people who don't like to be recorded more than the police are lawyers, judges, and unlicensed real estate agents. Because shortly after I posted this video, I was contacted by a number of brokers from Gilroy and Los Gatos who told me that Patty Felice never had a broker's license in the past 26 years, which means when a private judge appointed her in my divorce case, she had no authority to sell real estate, much less enter my home just as that judge in the video you just saw did. And when people act outside the law, and it's not caught by the licensing agencies or the district attorney, the public is harmed. And so we are investigating how it could be that the California Department of Real Estate failed to catch the fact that Patty Felice sold over 400 homes in California without a valid broker's license, and how it could be that she would be appointed by a family court judge and the district attorney would be more concerned about me recording the police than investigating people who were engaged in real estate fraud in Santa Clara County. Well, I have a real estate agent who is kind of, I don't know, kind of weird. And I'm not sure if I trust her. So I wanted to check, her, see um, her license, her real estate license, to see, you know, pretty much from birth to, to current, uh, when, when she applied for it and got it. Um, and uh, if it's still valid and active. So if I give you her name or what I think, she goes by Patty. I'm not sure if she goes by Patty or, or Patricia. Um, and her last name is Felice. And, and I'm not sure if it's F-I-L-I-C-E -F or F-L-F-I-L-E-Z, -E I don't know. So is there a way you can check to see the validity of that license? If I could look it up online and I had the ability to look it up online. But I just don't know if we're able to release that. You are. Yeah, I understand that. But as a state agency, I, I believe you guys are. I understand that. But I'm just saying, you know, because it is, you know, public record. But just hold on a second, okay? All right. Cool deal. Thank you. It's public record. She's got to check to see if she can release it to me. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So... Because she, okay, so I've got a property in, down in Santa Clara County. It's a million dollar property. I'm selling it, I bought a house up here already, up in Citrus Heights. So she is representing um, herself as an Intero agent, okay? And so I just wanna make sure she's above board because I don't know okay. anything about so Right now, she doesn't have an individual license, expired. 1994. So this is this is what you were asking me for. So is that is that the is that the history request that well, that you had that form? No, oh. no. This is her current status. Gotcha. This shows you when she got the ex expired. This is when this is showing the current status expired 1994 of gotcha. her individual broker license. Okay. I get it. So so okay. Her, okay. Even though she already had it. She renew it. He does not have to take the exam again. She applies for a second license. Right. It's $300. Okay. Right, 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 right. Yes. So once she gets all that done and it gets approved and through your, your department, then she can go ahead and sell my property. And if she wants to know that there's a certain, she wants to know if there's a, um, Anything on her background, she can get a certified history. Okay. And then if she wants to renew the office, she can go on e-licensing or she can use this. Okay. And as far as any kind of legal questions, you can talk to somebody. Enforcement. Your your Hi, Mr. Alonzo. 
Okay, I bet you didn't make as big of a mistake as this realtor made. And so while we've watched people lose trust in the police, in the courts, and in our prosecutors in the recent years, we also now can add real estate. And we're going to see if the Department of Real Estate will do anything about it. But we're also going to continue to investigate the relationship between Patty Felice and Intero Real Estate and divorce cases in Santa Clara County because there is more than an appearance that the private judges are using Intero Real Estate to sell off properties at a rate that just doesn't add up. Then we're going to ask to see the court records that Jason Pintar is required to have as a private judge here in Santa Clara County when he hears divorce cases. He's only an attorney, he's never had training, he's never been elected as a judge, but he's been given full powers to act as a judge and his name was recently published on a private judging list. So here we go. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be an interesting time for you to be a visitor.